everyone. We appreciate that you're attending. It's a discussion on a building a city now. A lot of people ask us why we can't do this or under what circumstances can we do this. So Jacques talks about it for about 38 minutes. We can start whenever you're ready. And then we'll have questions relating to that after. Well, I appreciate the effort of many of the members of the Venus Project to want to get going and get something built. What that would do, if you try to make a community of, say, 2,000 people, it would have to be exclusive, meaning it excludes people. And when, when you exclude people, you don't have a unified system. First of all, I just don't want people going at it haphazardly, growing food and, and feeding the hungry and making a place for people to sleep. As long as this culture can operate, it will do everything it can to defeat this direction. And you will defeat this direction if you try to make an exclusive cooperative community. The reason it won't work is because other people will try to get into that community. And if they don't have the qualification for the planning board, they can't get in and they will resent that. So what you have to do is prepare people intellectually and emotionally to understand all aspects of a Venus project. It cannot be accomplished by an immediate plan. People want to get going, you know, let's get going. Let's get it off the ground. Well, you can't do that unless the public knows what it's about. And if people don't know what it's about, it'll take off in many different directions which would not support the Venus Project. Now, I'll try to tell you a little bit about what has to be done. You have to inform people as to how people get their values and where they got them from. And when they admit and they submit to those values, that means they're ready to practice it. If they say, yes, I've been conditioned to be a Lutheran or a Seventh-day Adventist, if they admit that, if they don't admit that, they cannot function in the Venus Project. What does function mean, Venus Project? It means how to grow food, put up buildings, plan cities economically. They have to know what the Venus Project's proposals are in order to do that. In order to make it clear again, I've repeated this many times, you cannot propose any system, any system at all that's new, unless people know how that system works. The system is based upon the collapse of this system. If this system collapses, I mean, completely collapses. If we don't bail out the automobile companies or the industries that failed or the banks, if we continue to bail them out, we're not ready to start the Venus Project. It's when the system fails to provide for needs of people. And the people themselves, majority of people, demand a new system. And if they like the Venus Project's proposals, this is what the Venus Project's proposals are that you read the book, The Best That Money Can Buy, to get an overview of what the project's about. Two, the survey committee would do a survey, a global survey of available resources and population density and various types of illnesses that people have and how many older people there are that cannot function in the construction of the new cities. If you don't have that information offhand, you have a system that will have a lot of non-functionals in the city, incapable of making things happen. So the first city would have to be sponsored by a nation, whether it's Brazil, Bolivia, uh, uh, England, France, America. If one nation agrees to build the first experimental city, and that experimental city will be a trial and error system to test the validity 
of the painted Friday to see if it works. If there are areas that do not work, we have to clarify those areas. That means that if the city is designed with a built-in transportation system, so you don't need millions of automobiles, although people are used to their automobiles, they have to be convinced that the Venus Project can serve their needs without millions of automobiles. With millions of automobiles, it's like having a skyscraper with a parking place. Say if you got a thousand people working in that skyscraper, or 2,000 people, if you have a thousand automobiles, a thousand automobiles that you have to drive up into that building and park, well that would occupy a great deal of the building. And that wouldn't solve the problem. What you need is a mass transportation unit that can deliver thousands of people to their place of meeting. And at the place of meeting, we don't invite people to merely get up and make their recommendations. We merely require that people have information as to how much concrete there is, building materials, transportation to move building materials, how far the cities are from manufacturing plants. That's the information we need. We don't need, hey, what if we have a certificate that a person has that tells them what they're entitled to. That won't work. What will work is technical competence. That is the ability to report on how much building material we have, how much glass we have, how many people are capable of working in the planning zone. Now, the planning zone does not dictate. I want to say that carefully. The planning group does not dictate policy. The policy is dictated by the availability of resources. That's the only dictates. Yes, yeah, a dictatorship. It's a dictatorship based upon resources. If we don't have the resources, the Venus Project cannot be accomplished. No matter how idealistic you feel about it. If we have the resources, the technical personnel, and the building material, we can build it. We cannot accomplish it without that. So with all your enthusiasm for getting off the ground, let's go. What I want you to do is read the best that money can buy, read up on details of the Venus Project, and then talk to people and see if you can get them to go along with it. If you can get them to go along with the Venus Project, it can happen. If you fail to do that, no matter how enthusiastic your policy is, it won't work. So I'm saying this, become familiar with the Venus Project, talk to people, see if they accept the fact that environment shapes values, that their, all their opinions about how the future ought to be based is not based on statistical data. It's based on what they feel might work. And statistical data makes it possible to make it work. After all, we're trying to find out how big a city can be, how big should it be, and can you work on thousands of people at the same time, or is it necessary to work on 25 people at a time? In other words, we don't know that. But with diagrams, not just verbal, diagrams of the new city, the art centers, the music centers, the school system, family relations, if the family can identify with those relationships, it'll work. If they can't identify, you have to wait till the system collapses entirely. If it collapses entirely and people have no means of working out solutions, then they might turn to the Venus Project and say, what are your solutions? That makes, that's an assumption that people will understand the solutions. They do not necessarily understand the solutions automatically. That's why they have to be educated. They have to be taught a new way of thinking. Without that, you cannot attain the Venus Project. If they can agree with the new way of thinking, if they can't agree with it, they will not join the planning group. Do you understand that? The planning group would have to work 
with known conditions, known materials. We can't go ahead and design the ideal city. We can design an appropriate city to work. And in that city, we can find out what doesn't work, what has to be modified in order to do that. Once we get the city into a workable system, then we can advocate that that system be applied in Australia, in England, in France, in all the countries that join us. The countries that do not join us, we have to permit those differences. We cannot force them. And we feel that in time, the Venus Project will prove to be a system that's been validated by experiment. And I think that eventually, the people of countries that do not join with the Venus Project will eventually persuade their own people to become part of the Venus Project. Now, do we tell them what to believe or what to follow? No, we do not. If they have customs that are different than ours, uh, they can only practice their customs in another area because you can't have a Lutheran church, a Catholic church, a synagogue, a Muslim group in this area. This will only divide people. And so we have to build our system on common need that all people identify with. And that is that all people identify with clean air, clean water, available food, and medical care, and education. All people identify with that. And we work on the areas that people identify with. If you have 10 wives or 20 wives, you come from another country, it's very difficult for us to provide a system that works with all the different cultures immediately. We can eventually do that. We can eventually start with a Muslim community, a Catholic community, if you can't accept the Venus Project proposals right away. You have to have a system that works with the majority of religious people. You have to have provisions to take care of their needs. If they're Catholics, Lutherans, Seventh-day Adventists, or variations in religious groups, they have to be permitted to function. And they cannot function in with a planning group. Because a planning group is concerned with feeding people, educating people, and the necessary technologies. Religion doesn't do that. Therefore, you'd have to practice your religion elsewhere, not in the planning group. And the planning group, if you say a prayer before a meeting and people disagree on different areas, you won't get unification. If they learn how the Venus Project works and they've asked sufficient questions about it so that they understand why it's operating in a particular way. If anybody has any new ideas or suggestions to make, they can make them. But instead of saying people ought to learn to live together in peace, they would have to tell you how that's accomplished. How do you propose to accomplish that? If they say, well, we don't like that all these buildings being similar. Well, what do you suggest in taking care of seven billion people on earth. If every building is different, you cannot provide for those needs. Do you understand that? Therefore, we have to work on a unified project that people can agree upon in order to install the proposals of a Venus project. So you people that want to get going right away, get going on converting as many people as you can. And if you can't, it means the times aren't ready for it. That's what it means. Well, if you try to disrupt the system, you can disrupt the system by many different methods. You can withdraw your money from the banks, everybody. If everybody did that, the robberies would increase in your home, under the mattress, wherever you put that money. Uh, it just won't work, because the free enterprise system will say, you interrupted the system. You didn't even give it a chance to recover. It was recovering when you took over and stopped it from working. 
So you must let the system undergo its own evolution and failure. When it fails of its own accord, then you can't say, well, you interrupted the system, you stopped it from working. You're trying to build a Venus project. And that is the opposition you get. The system is failing all over the world, but it has to completely fail so that it cannot operate. Now, the only thing they can do is try to create another war. And to create another war would mean destruction of all the resources of the world, which means that never has worked. War is the supreme failure of nations to be able to get along or bridge the difference. We have to bridge the difference with information that's acceptable to people. You cannot go to a Muslim country and tell them you can only have one wife. You can't go to a Catholic country and say you have to give up Catholicism. It won't work. You'll have nothing but interference with your project. But you can have a planning center. Just as a, when a Catholic country needs a bridge built, they get bridge engineers together. When they need an industrial plant built, they don't call upon the Catholic Church. They call upon engineers that do production work, mass production work. So your factories, all the technology that must provide for people's needs, if it doesn't provide for their food, their clothing, their shelter, whatever they need, you're going to have disruptions. We will have many disruptions during the transition. Because the transition is finding our way in the new system. And I can't guarantee and say everything's going to work smoothly. Not during the transition. Only when we get underway will that work well. Do you have any other questions that are related to this particular recording. Jacques, um, if we were able to get a bigger research center built that was well equipped, but not a city, so, it more, would be people, exclusive. so more people could work with it us. It would be exclusive to only technicians and planners. Well, that's what we're doing here, but we need more help. Yes, we don't keep anybody out from learning about it. We try to send them back to school or teach them how to become functional within the new system. But you have to have, instead of seven billion people, you have to have a core group that can stick with the system and explain it and not go off in 50 different directions. But I think it would be very appropriate if we had a bigger center, even just a research center now, so more people could work I with us. I can't do that until a country calls us. No, I know. I mean, if we had some funding for it, but I would take that, too, because it's too hard on just the people who are here to do it all by ourselves. Well, if Americans fund the project to build the first experimental city, those funds will be acceptable. I'm talking about a bigger research center, too. If we well, that's what I'm talking about, to build the Venus Project experimental center for research and development to design and improve the operation of the Venus project. But I feel that that's extremely difficult. But if you can attain that, if it works, if you can manage in all the different countries to raise funds and pool your funds for an area, whether it be an island or a separate provision set aside by a country, for the Venus Project experiments, only under those conditions can it be done. Now, whether it can be done or not, I believe it would take a total collapse to get the get, to get underway. Without total collapse, you're going to have a lot of opposition. They say to me, you have to call before you walk. You have to start the first step. What is the first step? First step is the planning group. Without the planning group, you have nothing. The planning group tells us how many trucks are available, how much cement is available to build a new city, how much money is available to put in computerized machine shops and all that. We have to have, have to strive toward a certain fund. And the higher the fund, the better equipped the system. And if people don't support it, 
it will not occur. Are you talking about a, a, a center for that? Or are yeah. you talking about just people all over doing work? All over the world have to participate and say, well, that's the best thing we have up to now. If they don't realize that, you can't do it. No, I mean, are you, you're talking about people taking inventory and making budgets. Not Is that yet. what you're saying? No, just collecting funds for the building of new... They don't have to worry about the city. We need the funds. And Warren Buffett's the only guy I know that can finance it. If a country, say, Spain, says, come here, we'll give you the land to build the experimental city, then we don't need purchasing power then. If Spain says, or Argentina says, we'll give you the concrete, or Siam, which is one of the biggest concrete producers in the world, will give you whatever concrete you need. That will cut the funds and, and give us more to do it. In other words, if we have volunteers that say, we got a contract, 20 contractors that agree to put up that first experimental city, that will cut the amount of funds. I can't assume that. I can only assume if we get the funds, we can hire the contractors to do it. If the contractors volunteer, we don't need as much funds. And we need a, I'd rather wait and see if I can get a country behind us. One country that says, yes, we'll sponsor the building of that. It's much easier than trying to get the world to cooperate, then they go off in different directions. It doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. I would say it's more efficient to get one country to sponsor it. And we may get a country, if I can get over there, if I can get there to these lectures in Mexico, wherever I go, if they want to sponsor it, I will make that clear. What we need is sponsorship for the first city. No matter where I'm at, I must talk to them about it. And I think that if I got the ear of a country and they cannot influence a direction, they can only sponsor it. They would have no Muslim temple in the middle of the of the project, or a Catholic church, or a synagogue. It would not work if you try to do that. We work with human need. Now, religion is a need, but you can have that within yourself. It need not be in the planning center. You can't discredit all religion. Do you understand? You can't discredit people that believe in the free enterprises. It has to be run into the ground. And they will blame it on the socialists and then this and that. That's always the case. You always have put out there. And if they control the media, you cannot get to millions of people. They can fabricate all kinds of stories, shut down the Venus Project, make it illegal. They can do all that. Depends on how many people you get to. And if you get to enough people, you can get the first project off the ground. But you have to educate people, not assume, just because they heard it. They're doing the thing is running, and everybody has a job, and they don't understand it, it won't work. Sure. I hope I'm wrong. We will get a certain percentage of those people to go along with us, not everybody. Because you can't, because a lot of architects have a strong ego. A lot of people feel that if they only have decency and ethics is all you need, you know. Uh, I can't deal with that. I can only deal with the director of a country that says, okay, Chuck, we'll back you. If they do that, that will be the beginning. If some country may do that, very likely, but if it's not done, it won't happen. I, I can make it, tell them how urgent it is. I don't have to. They know how urgent it is. Well, we don't have a platform to do that. We don't have a platform. Well, I know what to do as soon as we get a country that says, yes, go. It right. takes a breakdown, complete mm -hmm. breakdown. Otherwise, there are still a lot of people that are making a lot of money. Uh, if you don't know this, automobile companies lie about the miles per gallon of cars. They're about 50% off, according to the experts. But they tell the public, 
you can get 40 miles for the gallon. And the truth is, you get 20 miles for the gallon. And the truth is that these people will lie and do whatever they can. You have to let the public know. To stay in power, they will do whatever they can. And they found out just recently, through survey, that the Bank of America is shafting GIs. As they borrow money from the bank, they charge them hundreds of dollars more in interest than the average person. And that will turn the GIs against the banks. That has to happen in order for them to fall in line with us. They don't fall in line with us because you criticize the system. The system has to offend people. And if it offends enough people, they will form groups, but they wouldn't know what to do. That's when they form groups, they're ready to listen. This Sunday, when we go to Miami, I can test that on the group, see how it works. Yeah. That's a group of people that don't like the way things are going, but they don't have any answer. If they take to this system, well, a certain percentage of them take, I will ask how many of you have learned something or agree with this, hands will go up. How many disagree? Some hands will go. If it's very few, I don't need to worry about expounding on detail. But most people all over the world seem to agree. Or somebody might answer, is there freedom of religion? Yes. Next question. You don't get into detail on it. Okay? Guys, I suppose I don't want to live in you say that you can live wherever you choose to live. Next question. You have to kind of pinpoint Instead of a guy getting up and saying, well, I lived in Philadelphia for seven years. I don't want to hear a story. What's your question? What's your opposition? If you can do that, what if a country doesn't agree with you? Then they can live their own lives. What if a person is a member of the Amish church and they don't want to live in that city? Can they live in their own? Yes, they can. No long elaboration. You understand? Yes, they can. Yes, no. Or uh, if the question requires a detailed answer, I will give it. Okay. Do we have enough resources? If we intelligently manage resources, we can do it. But we can't the way resources are done today. Every building company would like to know, can I sell fiber board to your new city? Well, it depends. How far along are we? I'd rather build our own materials. Uh, the first city would be an experimental city, more like that, without all the loveliness and the gardens, more of a planning center. The second city would be an elaboration of the first. Well, if Warren Buffett says, let's go, he's worth billions, he can do it. But can I get the Warren? I don't know that. I don't think he against the capitalistic system. I don't know that. Yeah. He believes in it, but if it doesn't work, he's going to have to do something. With, and he's going to have to employ people to build a city, a new city. Whatever it is, I really can't tell you. How do I know? I'm going to find out when, I, when somebody says, go to hell, and they walk out. I don't know what people will do, but that mostly their own projections. So I'll be very careful to say, hear me out, hear me out first before you ask the questions. You know, listen to it and try to pinpoint your questions so other people can ask questions. Put it that way. Instead of going on a roundabout description, you're cutting out other people from asking questions. And there's no such thing as a dumb question so people feel they can ask anything. Okay, all these dumbbells have to go through that. They have to be rejected. They have to come up with no solutions. Or solutions that don't work. Let them get elected. Let them put their solutions in. And if they don't work for the majority, if it gets real bad, the majority will revolt. They'll, they'll occupy buildings and take over. That's called revolution. But that will not cure the problem. 
must they call upon the Venus Project and have a council and say, what is the Venus Project anyway? He had to design some point of view that's somewhat central to people's needs. If it doesn't deal with people's needs, it won't work. That's all it has to deal with, is providing for human need. And if you can get that, of course, you can get to any country. If you don't attack their establishment. You don't have to attack their establishment if people lose confidence, which is happening. People are revolting against their established governments, but they don't know what to do about it. I'll point that out. Or oh, they're trying to elect decent people. Even if they were elected, say uh, a guy with socialistic ideas was elected, and if he dies, what happens? They do the best they can, and if it doesn't work, they change it. And uh, if undeveloped countries try to take things away from developed countries, war will occur. They'll shoot them. They don't care as long as they maintain their position of control. Let me say it again. They'll do whatever they have to do to win the battle. They'll lie, arrest people, assassinate people, whatever they have to do. But if their system continues to fail, at least there'll be more war of their own kind alive. And they'll be killing each other. I'd sure like to say, sure, go ahead, start your own group. I have to, we have to be sponsored. People say, go ahead, start it. How do you start it? Without cooperation. And, and it's better if you can get to the leader of a country. And it's better if the country is somewhat liberal. But Sweden was moving to the right, the last I heard. But if it fails, it has to fail before you can do anything. Do you understand that? I don't like it to be, wait till it fails. I mean, can't we do something before? No, you can't. As long as the banks operate and they're in control, they own the media. If GE owns NBC, I'm going to get on NBC to talk about the Venus Project. Do you understand that? CBS owns, they all have shares in the auto companies and everything else. So they're all one kind of unit of exploitation of the public. Is that you always imply that we're waiting? We're not waiting. We're working as hard as we can to educate, to make more media. We're not waiting for it to collapse. Well, I know that, that some people think we're waiting for it to collapse. I say it has to collapse before people will join with you. They're not going to join with you unless they're very well informed. Yes, there are people that will join with you, but they're small in numbers. That's all. Is that it? Okay. Okay, that's kind of an informal, unedited <laughs> a little talk we had. Were there any questions related to that? You could just ask them. I have a question. Sure, go ahead. So the, the global survey and the planetary survey of the population and the economic needs and also presumably the economic wants, you know, such as like musical uh, fulfillment and that kind of thing, the global survey, how does the Venus Project propose to enact that global survey? And there, are, there are much sources of information today, but we will not engage in that until people want the Venus Project. It would be a waste of time to do a survey now, because you won't get the accurate information you will get once it's sponsored. Do you have a proposal write-up already prepared that you could present to a leader of a country? Not until it fails, and they start saying, well, what can we do? I don't know. Then we can submit possible alternatives. I'd just like to make mention of the fact that Google 
does a zeitgeist every year where they use, I guess, algorithms to collate all the data of all the different searches that were performed on Google and to see what's popular and uh, what's succeeding. I know that's very, very different than what the Venus Project would seek to do, but once you are dealing with that much data coming in through either environmental sensors or people acting as sensors and all relaying information back, surely it will need algorithms, some kind of algorithm to sort through all that information and find what's relevant and what's pertinent. And is that right? Or? No, you need information regarding our ability to grow food, provide water, put up buildings, medical care. You need information on what is available and what needs to be done to fulfill the medical needs of people, feeding them during the transition, you need that kind of information. During the transition, you can't plan the grand city. You can plan it only with what you know and what you have access to. There's a question, how can religion be educated out of the population? By using the Bible. In the Bible, it says, thou shalt not kill. There would be no armies, no navies in that case. In the Bible it says, love your enemy. A man strikes you, turn the other cheek. So all the behavior of nations is in violation of most, not all, but most religious teachings. I myself am not religious, but you have to use the Bible to undo concepts that people have accepted. You have to prove them wrong. If they believe the earth is, you have to demonstrate to the best of your ability the information that indicates that it's not flat. And if you can't do that, you can't change people. Do you have any country in mind for the first city? Well, I would like certain places, but that doesn't make it available. Will the changes in solar activity heating up the earth help or set back the goals of the Venus Project? No, it will not. We'll get earlier crops with it and we'll be able to, it depends on how severe the conditions are, but we can always build things to reflect the heat away, to cool off certain areas. We can put up glass buildings that use the natural heat of the earth to generate cooling or refrigeration if needed. Now, there are technical ways of solving problems. I don't think we would have a problem with that if we were sponsored. What if the sponsoring country wants to project their own ideas toward the Venus Project, such as they want to sign a contract and have the rights to certain aspects or control? I would have to convince them that the system that they're advocating may or may not enhance the Venus Project. I can't say offhand. It depends on what they offer. How do you overcome multinational governments, powers, and authority? You don't. It has to fail. That's what that means. Failure means economic breakdown. Government is dissolved because they don't have the money to pay off. It means a breakdown of the system, just like a corporation. If you didn't sponsor the Chevy company, they would have gone under. If you give money to the banks that failed, you're preventing it from changing or delaying it for a certain amount of time. But it will fail. The system is not a valid system that we live under. It's good for so many years, then it dies. Every system dies. There's no way to design a society that's optimal or utopian. It's better than the one that was. Systems always undergo change. Egypt was once very powerful. They are no longer there in existence. They long, no longer have the power they used to have. No system can freeze and continue since all systems change. The nation that can visualize the future will move forward. Nations that cannot will be surpassed. 
What about building a small community in Australia, in Australia or the UK populated by people educated in the relevant information as an education and research center so that people will not have to go all the way to Florida? Yes, do that if you can. Do whatever you can to help spread the information. People don't really have to come here. We don't no. we don't assume that the first city or larger research center will be built here. Actually, it couldn't be built here on our land. It would have to be built someplace else or another country. We would prefer it in another country, actually, other than the United States. What's the reason that you would prefer it elsewhere? If this system fails first, then we and they are interested in building an experimental city, we will build it. If Brazil says, let's try it there, or England or France or Australia, wherever we're invited, we will do it, including China or any other country that wants to, to, do, to assist in that ex social experiment. When you talk about how to educate children, it's always very helpful when you talk about how you raised your children. It's a very difficult subject to talk on the internet because there's many different aspects to it. First of all, if parents are in charge of children, you can't affect change as fast because parents are victims of culture and they tend to cling to that which they know. That's why you have wars, because people can understand other countries in, in, with enough detail to say, well, we advocate that. You can't do that if you have separate churches. But if the churches begin to sit down and discuss areas that they have in common and see if they can come to an agreement as to worship in a particular way that includes everybody. There are churches today that are attempting to do that. They're universal. But without a social design, it will not be very successful. have to encourage people to send their kids to summer camp. There we will condition them or expose them to a set of relevant values. They will not go back home and criticize their parents. They will understand where their parents are coming from. What induced them, they will not be hostile to one another or want to hurt one another. Uh, would, the, would you prefer micro sponsorship uh, from uh, from individuals donation five to three uh, three to five dollars per week, or a large donations from uh, big sponsors or uh, companies or both? If they have no, if they do not dictate policy, yes. Yeah, it's it's very difficult to do this I, with uh, just very small donations for something that's as costly as a first city. What sort of um, dollar value do you expect the first city to be at? It's in the hundreds of millions. How many people do you expect to accommodate at that first city? Well, really, it doesn't take too many people to be the major planners. Don't forget, we only plan one eighth of the system and then we replicate it continuously until we have a circular city. So we may need no more than 100 people in the planning, initial planning. Mainly architects, engineers, and environmentalist survey committees. Is that the full, that the full sort of um, technical competence you would require for the people, or do you have a, a set roster that you would look at? Yeah, any, anyone that's a qualified architect, when given a new assignment, they can handle it. Also, people, any structural engineers can handle the structures of the buildings. Also, there would be people there who are writing books, doing videos, doing multimedia to help introduce this direction as well. We'd like to accommodate that too. Yes. So something else to bear in mind is, for example, I live in the UK. If this was being done in Brazil or something, regardless of not whether or not I'm an architect or not and part of the Venus project, um, the chances are, you know, it's not going to be viable to, to fly me over to go and be an architect when there's plenty of architects in Brazil that could be doing that job that are supportive of the project or even, you know, 
funded by you know by the sponsor of the project and stuff. So it's really going to be dependent on the situations at the time and based on what the sponsorship is, you know, and the, the agreements with the companies that are going to be working on helping to, to develop the city, etc. So. so for a complete circular city, how many people do you think that that could accommodate? You're talking about the first city, how many people would it accommodate? It depends on the circumstances, what we run across. We can't predict that. Yeah. As they say, build a city for 50,000, or we'll sponsor a city for 25,000, or 100,000. That's why it would be wrong for me to plan the city and hand it to them. What are they prepared to support? Then the city will be planned in accordance with the access of material resources. Yeah, it's, it's a bit like asking how long is a piece of string that one, you know, um, it really depends on how much the sponsor has available to them for the supply of technology to, to, to actually run in the city, for the supply of materials, human resources, material resources to actually build the city, how many people they're looking to support in that first city, you know, like Jack says, you know, if they want 50, 000, uh, a city for 50,000, the city design is going to be very, very different from a city for a million people, so it really does depend on you know sort of what the sponsors have got available to them to you know to us to, to be able to sort of do that development so. but in the meantime before we build the city which is require hundreds of millions of dollars would you uh prefer uh prefer people who will contribute in the venus project uh, maybe making uh, by weekly weekly donations to build their uh, probably uh, research facility bigger than you have right now? Oh yes, whatever whatever you can do to help forward this type of information. Yeah, we're really not building on the research center here though. There are a lot of restrictions here in terms of zoning board, how many people it can house. So it's, it's expanding this place would be very difficult we, it, we're very limited as to what we can build in terms of residence. It's also designated wetlands after we moved here, so that put more restrictions on it. So we couldn't expand this to be a research center, really. It would have to be done elsewhere. We'd have to have enough funding to do that, too. If, if enough people sponsor it, we can build a research center here in Florida. There's lots yes. of land available at a relatively low cost and lots of material resources. But I can't count on that. Only if people do that can we make it a reality. It depends on what the people do. Don't put it all on Roxanne and Fresco. If you want to see a city built, you can support it yourself. And if we don't get sufficient funds, we will build whatever we can. It's very difficult to build with very with, with uh, minimal funds too, because that's the way we built this place. We had to work on the outside, and then we, when we got a, some more funds, we expanded in here, but it was very low cost. We have many buildings, but they're very small and even inadequate for what we need. So it's really not the way to go, and it takes a very long time to do it that way, just collecting a few dollars here and there. It really needs to be sponsored, a large enough sum of money to, to sponsor a better research center so more people can participate. It just takes too long the other way, and it's not, it's not efficient and not adequate enough. Unless you know some multi-millionaires that want to help. How many buildings do you have at the research center at the moment? No, we have about nine buildings. Some of them are storage. We have two video domes where we have displays of models and Jacques shoots models. We have three residents right now. They're all occupied. We have two shops. We have an office and storage buildings. Two, two shops, yeah, I mentioned that. Yeah, that's what we have here. They're not large buildings, they're small. That's all we could afford at the time. But we built these all by hand. And that's why it took so long, because we did do it ourselves in between jobs and, and did the, the work ourselves. How much did it cost? I couldn't tell you. We didn't even keep a record. But we did most of the work, so it helped. 
I would love to know that in case of a breakdown, how do you guarantee that the Venus Project's ideas are actually applied correctly? How do you guarantee that multiple uh, persons can take the idea and present it to a large variety of uh, places at the same time and, spill, and still speak uh, coherently? To be trained, and they have to read our literature and understand the various stages that the system has to go through to become a workable system. And if they have any questions, they really have to, instead of projecting their own ideas or making things up, they, it would be best to have them ask what the procedures would be, because Jacques has worked this up for many years technically as well, so it's best to check. But we have a lot of information out there. They could start with that. But, but do you have that information written in paper? Uh, it, the, the problem is I've read your, your books, and it, it is not clear uh, exactly what the procedure will be. So I'm hoping that you have that uh, separately in, in, in a piece of paper somewhere, um, and then people will know what to do specifically. I can't say that for sure because it depends if it happens a year from now or 10 years from now, the procedure will be different. It depends when people are ready for it, when we get the commission to say, yes, build the first city. That time, we'll work a procedural system for that time. Each, it depends on how far, how long you have to wait, the procedure will change. It becomes more efficient, the larger the funding. What people really have to understand now is the direction of the Venus Project, what we're advocating, and, and have a, an understanding to be able to talk to people and answer questions. Um, I consider it very normal if uh, someone that, when the time comes, will have some people wanting to work and putting things forward, but they still might get lost and depend too much on Jack to actually implement things. That is my main problem, I mean. When Edison made the electric lamp, he had to show people how it's made. When Einstein had a theory of relativity, he had to explain to other scientists what he meant by relativity. If he didn't do that, if he died in the middle of the theory, there was no one else around at the time that could explain it. When the Wright brothers built an airplane, they explained it to the Curtis people and other people so they can build an airplane. If you, you say to me, if Louis Pasteur died, what would happen to vaccination? I don't know. Maybe somebody else would come up with it later. But whoever came up with it would have to explain it to other people, to other doctors that didn't know about it. We have a lot on paper here. We have a lot of people who know about this direction. There are a lot of scientists that know different processes that can be put to work in different areas that are needed at the time. A lot of people know the process level of what needs to be done and the major direction. And I, I don't see that much of a problem there. No, in other words, if somebody puts up a certain amount of money and they say, can you build a city that way? Yes, it might be built by hand, but if they put up sufficient funds, we will design machines to help put up the cities. In other words, we will work on self-erecting structures. But that all depends on the funds we have. And we see the first city as a planning center to make the second city more automated, more efficient, uh, to be able to handle more people and bringing in other people that can help in that area as well. Okay, I have a question, Jock. In regard to the current state of technology, my own estimate is that virtual reality environment is now viable and will remain so increasingly in the years to come. I'm personally at a point where my research has led me to conclude that the virtual reality environment is currently viable, not only for demonstrations, but also for education. My question would be, Jock, would you agree? Would you be interested in engaging, in participating? Um, you've often referenced 
for future use of that environment. I don't see the advantage. We can build a real thing. How how do you how do you implement something like that? What's the use of that for, Craig? What what are you talking about exactly? My current understanding is its use can be what you want it to. There's far too much of a stagnant perception that the current state of virtual reality is that of a computer game. That is not the case. Increasingly, universities, Harvard for one example, Harvard University is engaging in this environment for education. Governments and corporations are also engaging in this environment. It's a global environment one that can facilitate communication and education on a much more advanced level. I think this will be proved in the coming years, but I for one within the research team will be participating in this with Nate Stan and others, um, currently in a research phase, but the possibilities, they're really encouraging, they really are, I think it be, could become a massive tool for our use. We would certainly want to use any type of media, multimedia, any type of tool like this. But, you know, we don't have access to that at this time, nor do we have people working on it, and we don't have the funding to engage in something like that. We've had a lot of volunteers take Jacques' designs, just even in the sketch form, and make animations, renderings from that, which was terrific but we don't have the capability at this time to work in that field. Would it be possible for us, um, the research team and yourself, to discuss these concerns regarding design on Skype in the near future, please? Sure, we can discuss them. The way we put up our cities, as I said many times, is determined by funds available. I can't tell you what the city will look like. It depends on the funds available. This Within a virtual environment, though. Virtual reality as a, as a possible temporary alternative because it saves us significant funds. We, we have been doing that all along to right. show what this is like. And we've started with sketches, with drawings, with models, with videos. Mm -hmm. If we had um, Cameron come along and say, we want to do a 3D movie on this, we would jump at it. You know, we don't rule any of that out. Any way that this can be presented that will get to people in a more positive way and, and impact them to show what, what the future could be like, we, we would definitely do that. But That's do you right. have access to, you know, people who can do that and the technologies? If you do we, and they want to help, that's great. That's why we want to make a motion picture. We want to make a motion picture to help people understand the various sequences of the Venus Project, how it would emerge from a monetary system to a resource-based economy. All the detail from A to Z. Well, if you put it out now, if you put out the steps to do that now, commercial interest will take patents out on it and prevent you from building what you want to build. If I were to give out information in detail, that's a lot of products that corporations would be very interested in. I've got a design for an automobile with 32 parts. If I put that out there, and then people will just take it, just like a ballpoint pen, just like China takes things. Uh, you, you know, a lot of people use our drawings to raise funds for their own project. Are you aware of that? If there's anyone in the 3D field that wants to help in that way, just have them get in touch with us directly to meadows at the venusproject.com if you'd like. I mean, what I'm suggesting is within the Second Life virtual reality environment, Andrew's 3D renderings have been fantastic. Within the virtual reality environment, it then becomes an educational environment that people are able to engage. There are currently millions of people using the virtual reality environment, engaging within that environment. 
study groups, educational classes, also 3D modeling classes. There's a massive 3D modeling community there. I'm asking you as well, Andrew, in regard to the 3D modeling, can we have at least an equal emphasis on that modeling within virtual reality? Because not only are we willing to show a video, we're able to do that in virtual reality, stream videos within that environment. But people engage on a much more active participatory level. And not so much for building a city and demonstrating designs, but from a social networking, from even a corporate or governmental networking perspective, and from an educational perspective. We have an environment there that really is a massive tool with little or no funding required for that. Craig, we've discussed this over and over and over previously, as you know. Um, I'm just going to go over it again, just for, for those who haven't sort of been party to the, the information. Um, over the last few years, all of the 3D models and stuff that you've seen that exist on the internet about the Venus Project were done by a handful of people working part-time when available um, to work on those things. Myself and Julia worked full-time for almost uh, 14 months producing that, that 3D city. And that was while we was off work, so we were literally on that full-time. If you've got people that can do all of the 3D modelling, send them my way. I've yet to see anyone come my way, apart from one person which I'm speaking to this week, that A, has the ability to be able to do so, B, has the time available to be able to do so, and C, actually really wants to get involved and do it. Um, and I'm speaking to that person this week. So it really comes down to, you know, I, I get thousands and thousands of emails, I'm not kidding you, of people with ideas about how great it would be to do this, how great it would be to do that, how great it would be to build a research centre, how great it would be to build a city, how great it would be to do a 3D you know, visualisation and walkthrough and all the rest of it. It's great, they're all great ideas. The problem is implementation. It's no good just having ideas and not having a way of implementing it. So if you're really interested in getting something done in, in, in some 3D you know, visualisation area, whether it be Second Life, or if it be something like CryEngine, which you know we we done a a model in for the exhibition last year, we need to get people involved in those things, um, and I can't do that all myself. I'm one one human being, uh, and I do what I can when I can. We need help with these things. We need people to take these projects on. We need people to actually get the stuff done. Uh, and without those people, it's just all you know farting in the air. You know, it's it's, it's 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 no good just giving out lots of ideas about what you want to do. Um, there's tons and tons of projects I want to do. You know, just look at the different um, different projects on our TVP support, TVP core, TVP design pages. We've got tons and tons of things that we want to get going, and yet we haven't got the people and the dedication in those teams to get to actually get them going at the moment. And that's not detrimental to anyone here or, or anything else. It's just saying that's the state of play that we've got. We've got tons and tons of things that we want to do. How do we implement them? That's that's the real key issue. So if you've got people, send them away and we'll get something sorted. Uh, I would like to add something to that. Andrew, I, I don't know how busy your schedule is. Probably uh, you probably don't have any free time left. But could it be an idea that you uh, give classes on how to build 3D models and that way uh, get people to participate in it? I really wish I could, my friends. I mean, my time is ludicrously taken up. Um, at the moment, I'm working 14 hours a day, uh, including traveling. By the time I get home, I've got hundreds of emails that I need to go through. Uh, and I haven't actually managed to do any modeling for the last eight months while I've been developing up the, the, the global teams for the second Roxanne. Thankfully now, a lot of people are actually taking over like yourselves. Um, you're all getting involved and starting to take a lot of that work on. So, you know, it's starting to bring me up a little bit. Um, but I've still, you know, my, my time is still very limited at the moment. There are lots of courses online um, where you can actually learn 3D modeling and stuff. It's your best bet, really. I mean, your best bet is to pick up one of the 3D modeling packages, you know, 3D Studio Max or whatever. You can pick them up as student licenses and stuff, so, you know, it won't cost you anything. And then just, you know, pick up some, um, you know, online tutorials and stuff and just, just have a go at it. That's, that's the best way into it, really. Um, and that's how I learn. Okay, that's the same way I learned as well. Then would it be a good idea to get a page on a website which basically gives you 
an overview that if you want to do this, you have to take this and this and this course. If you want to do that, you have to do that and that course. Yeah, if you go to um, if you go to the Venus Project website, and I'm thinking it's under the Venus Project menu at the top, uh, you'll see you'll see Learning Center, and then if you go to the Learning Center, then TVP Community College, you'll see that I posted up a bunch of 3D modeling courses and stuff on there in 3D Studio Max and also in AutoCAD, uh, and we're going to be publishing more stuff to that you know, as time goes on. It's just really it just really comes down to how much people sort of contribute to that and and sort of send in their ideas for you know, videos to add and stuff like that, and we try and get them up as soon as possible. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, this is something that's been wor worrying me a lot, is, is what, what will the Venus Project do when there's social collapse? What will be the strategy? It isn't what the Venus Project will do. It's what the governments will do. If they call upon us, or like any group that wants to build a better world has to call upon us and we will give them the information necessary. I'm just Thank you. That out right now. The more people talk about this and the more contacts they make and expand upon this, the better chances we have with all that as well. Or getting a group of people together to, to initiate something who are in a position to do that. And that will become more viable as things start to fall apart, we believe. Yes, I agree with that. Thank you. Okay, I guess we'll, um, we'll continue this next week then. Thanks again, everyone. Yes, thank you very much. Thanks for your time, Jeff Moxon. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next week on March 25th, 2012. Bye, everybody. Hugs.